All right, my name is Mark. That's uh, Noah, and we're going to teach you how to build a computer. <coughs> so we're going to start off with the importance of grounding yourself. That way you don't shock uh, any of uh, the sensitive components with your electrostatic stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. So just take like a clip, attach it to the case or any large metal uh, structure. Mm -hmm. That should be good. Um, when building a computer, you want to make sure you have everything first such as your uh, screws, motherboard, uh, processor, fan, processor, um, power supply, <laughs> graphics card, and everything else you might need for the computer. Like RAM? And, and RAM, yes. Um, so you want to prepare your kitchen, make sure everything's where it needs to be. Um, make sure you have it all. All right, so first we're gonna start by installing the power supply. Make sure you are not grounded while doing that. Yep. Why? Uh, because, well, in case anything bad happens uh, with the power supply wanting to shock you, you don't have a place for the electricity to travel through you to the big old metal surface. <laughs> so this is our uh, power supply. It's the Roswell Hive. Uh, 85 OS full module power module modular power supply. Um, and why it's modular is because you can uh, plug in what you need rather than having a power supply um, where it's all there in the first place. And if you don't have the right stuff for it, you can't use it in your computer. So I'm going to install this now. So I'll come closer. <coughs> You're installing it upside down. Make sure the fan goes out the bottom. If there is a vent there. What's great about this? We can edit this. <clears throat> so first, you gotta find your screws for the power supply <coughs> and your screwdriver. Mm -hmm. Obviously. There should be about four screws for a power supply, usually. Make sure you have them all in there. You can do it with two, not suggested, so it could fall out. How many watts is this power supply again? Um, this power supply is 850 watts. So the power supply is now installed into the case. Um, I guess I should reground myself. And just kind of route the cables through the back, that way you can keep it all nice and managed. cables through the back. We're going to install the motherboard. Uh, please verify that your case uh, has standoffs in it. If not, then you got to install it. Standoffs are like two millimeters tall and they separate the case from the motherboard. <coughs> and there are also places for you to mount your motherboard to the case. Point to one of the standoffs. To separate the motherboard from. All right, so next we're going to install the processor and cooler. Um, we're not going to put the motherboard in the case yet since we have a back plate that goes on it to keep the uh, cooler in place. <laughs> um, so when installing this back plate, it has four little holes um, 
at the back of the motherboard and it just sets on there like that. Um, make sure you have the back plate on there because there's no way you're going to get that fan on without it there. Alright. I just want to explain what the processor is. Or do you want to put this on? Or you can put this on. Yeah. Alright, so the processor is a yeah, PGA uh, processor um, by just right. AMD. AMD. It's a what exactly what processor? Is it? It's the Ryzen 1700. It's a Ryzen 1700. Um, when installing your processor um, for long periods of time, unless you're going to make a video like this where people are going to be pulling it in and out. Um, you're going to want to put on thermal paste. Let's go ahead and do it for demonstration purposes. And we're going to do it for demonstration purposes. How'd you put the processor inside there so easily? Mm, it, with pin grid array, it's especially with AMD, it's zero and insertion force, so you just put it on and close the clamp. With Intel, you do require, uh, with Intel and LGA, uh, type configurations you do require a little bit of force so why do we put thermal paste on there to spread the to allow the heat to go from the internal heat spreader to this heat spreader on the heat sink that can then transfer the heat to the air via the fan and install this this is our fan um, when installing the fan, you want to make sure your uh, power to the fan is closest to the nearest um, power on the motherboard, which is right here. You can see that. There's three of them right here. Um, one is specifically made for the CPU fan, which is this middle one. And you can see the lettering right there. It says CPU fan. All right, now I'm going to install the fan itself. All right, so when installing the fan, you want to make sure to apply even torque to all the screws to spread the thermal paste. That's enough. Okay. Make sure it's all lined up properly. Get everything on here. And you will have to apply a little bit of force since there are springs pushing back at you. <clears throat> like I said, spread it out evenly. Don't completely torque down on the first go around. Just keep going around until they're tight and won't move anymore. Alright. That one's not moving. Alright, so now that the processor and fan are installed, we're going to place the motherboard into the case. The motherboard is uh, full ATX, is uh, ATX size, and uh, which is the most common size there is. And I'll install in the every case that is advertising ATX sizing. All right. So when installing the um, motherboard, you want to make sure there are no cables in the way that are causing it not to install properly. Um, I actually just found one, which is this little fan right here, right in the way to where I can't install the motherboard itself. 
um, make sure they're sitting, make sure the motherboard is sitting on the standoffs that you would, uh, we had put in earlier. And line up the I.O. plate with the hole in the case for the I.O. Yep. Um, another good thing to have is a little red Solo cup. It can hold all your little uh, screws and everything so you're not losing it. Because when they fall on the ground, they are highly annoying to try and find. All right. So when installing the uh, motherboard, you'll do the exact same thing, just like you did with the fan. Torque it down evenly in like a star pattern. Try not to do it right near each other. So like, I just went from the corner to the middle, and now I'm going to this corner, which is the hardest to get to. This is awesome. Got to find the hole. There we go. There are, um, I think, nine screws I had to put in this to keep it down properly. And dropping the, uh, the screws in the case is not a fun thing because then you have to go get it out. <coughs> um, an easy way to do that is to get a magnet on the end of, of a little pole to get the screw out. But since we don't have that, you just shake the case around a little bit. And it should fall right on out. Um, these screws do ground the uh, motherboard to the case. As you can see, the little bits of metal right there. They are touching the screws when it goes down, which is touching the standoffs, which is touching the case just grounding the whole motherboard to the case. Uh, when installing your motherboard with the screws, you want to make sure the screws go in properly or they're just going to um, cause you to strip the standoffs, which is one problem I'm facing right now. Um, all right. After you put in all nine screws, we're ready to um, plug in the power supply to the motherboard to test and see if your computer will start. Um, one cool thing about this computer is it has a, a start button and a postcard built in. A postcard, which will um, give you an error code for um, whatever arrow is wrong with it. Now if your motherboard does not have that start button uh, integrated onto it, you will have to find which pins is the uh, start positive and negative one for your case layout. Then you'll simply use a screwdriver and bridge the two pins and it will start up. Just pretend that some of these pins, like these two pins are it. Tap it between, it will complete the circuit and it will turn on. All right, so now we're going to plug in everything from the power supply to the motherboard. Right, we're gonna flip this up. So when doing this, if your case has these little holes that you can stick everything through, use them because it'll make cable management really, really easy later on when you're trying to figure out, oh, what cable goes to where. So the, uh, if you want to come around so you can see all the, the cables. 
was I unplugging at the moment. So for now, the only thing we need to plug in is the 24 pin um, main power connector and a yeah, and a four pin. If you could see that, uh, four pin um, backup power. And when installing these, make sure you have enough uh, length in your cable to reach everything. Um, So in this external power connector, we don't have enough room. So we're going to go over the motherboard, which will be a hassle later. But for this demonstration, it's fine. And make sure you're plugging in the right thing to where it needs to go. Because it will suck if you have to pull this back out and fix it because you broke it. Don't force anything, everything should go in pretty easily, which is hard to see. Did we need the white? Yeah. And we have these very nice whites with us. Wow. We should have been on the. We should have been moving that way. And just like that, plugs in real easily. Um, and yes, while messing with anything from the power supply, make sure you're not grounded. Um, so we got the 24 pin Molex. Um, everything should be fine to start up. We're gonna plug in the fan to where it needs to go, and the fan, uh, CPU fan power. All right, now we need to plug in the power supply. The cord is over here. Straighten it out a little bit. Make sure the uh, the switch is in the off position. Like I said, cable management, you get tangled up. Alright. So we'll flip it on. Now we'll press, as you can see, everything's turning on now. It's getting all colored up because we got the pretty, pretty motherboard. Give it the start button. As you can see, everything that we have connected so far will turn on. So now it's time for the RAM and the video card. Yep. So turn it back off. All right, so now we're going to turn it off. Start button didn't turn it off, does it? I believe it does. Nope, okay, so to turn it off, you're just gonna have to turn the switch off from the power supply. Unplug. And it's not really harmful because we don't have an operating system to plug data on. Yep. Alright, so unplug the power supply itself and discharge, which I'm just gonna hold the uh, start button. Alright. That Every should be enough. Everything is now discharged. We can start adding our um, RAM, um, graphics card, and everything else. Uh, remember, be very careful with your uh, case. You don't want to break it. And whoever that you, whoever bought it for you, can be really mad if you break it. All right. This is our. Uh, Here's our RAM. We got the uh, Trident Z RGB, which is uh, <coughs> DDR4. Yep. DDR4 RAM. It's a little bit faster than DDR3, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, DDR4 is just a little bit faster than uh, DDR3. Um, it's also eight gigs of stick, and we have two sticks, making it sixteen gig kit. Mm -hmm. Alright, so you want to make sure you're grounded for this. And uh, please refer to the motherboard manual or writing on the motherboard to see where you should uh, install your uh, RAM 
and sticks, depending on if you want single channel, dual channel, or if your motherboard supports triple channel. Yep. Um, all right, so when installing the memory, you want to make sure the little notch is in the right spot. As you can see down here, um, there's a little metal bar that keeps the wrong memory from installing in the system. Also stops you from installing it backwards. And it stops you from installing it backwards. As you can see, there's two different lengths on each side of that notch. So we're going to put it in. Make sure it slides in the right hole. Because um, they have little guiders in each of these that allow it to connect. All right. So the memory is now in. Um, we'll do one more test. Make sure the memory works. We'll test it. Make sure the memory works. All right. This should light up and everything. On and start. Make sure it's plugged in properly. All right. So it works perfectly. It's plugged in. The lights are on. It's amazing. And we turn it off. Unplug the system. And discharge again. Alright. Um, to discharge, you'll want to hold the power button or our little start button on the motherboard for about five seconds. You'll be fine. Um, next, we're going to install the uh, graphics card. Don't you want to also try your other stick of RAM? Um, mm -hmm. I was going to do that after we get it on so we can uh, detect the RAM. Mm -hmm. um, when installing RAM, like uh, Mr. Mark said, you're going to want to um, install one stick at a time to test everything rather than going two sticks in the first place. As long as you have one stick, it should be fine. You can go into the BIOS and see which stick is not being detected yep. and properly seed it, or if it's dead on arrival, you can just send it back and uh, they'll give you a new one. What kind of video card is this? This is a um, GTX 1050. Yeah, GTX 1050 by NSI. It's a gaming computer video card, so it's really beefy. Um, this one needs its own power. You don't have to plug it up to the power supply to use it. Um, we were prepared and we took out um, <coughs> the pieces of the CPU that were in the way. Like these, um, what are these called? Cover plates. Oh, the PCIe cover plates? Yeah, the PCIe cover plates. We took those out. Dust shields, whatever you want to call it. Yep. We took those out beforehand. Um, but the easy way to take those out is those little screws. You uh, just unscrew them, pull them out. With, some cases come with them screws. Some cases come with one-time pop-offs, so you just pop it out. Yeah. And if you, some cases don't even come with them at all. It all depends on your case manufacturer. All right, so to install these, um, I just did. If you want to look over here, there is... Actually, let's pull it out again. What kind of expansion slot did you put that in? I put it in the PCIe expansion slot. So here's the connectors for it. Um, it'll only go in the PCIe, not a PCI or a PCI times one. This would be the times one connector right here. As you can see, that's way too small to put in for this. So we're gonna put it in the PCIe, and it should line up just fine. Go over here and look over top. So as you can see, there's the hole it goes in, and we're just gonna slide it over. Make sure the tab is out and push it down. Now it is connected. Um, I'm going to add the screws to, um, mount, it in place. to mount it in place. Right. And make sure you're grounded when touching any of the components except for the power supply. Now that that is plugged in, um, instead of going and 
testing that right away. I'm going to plug in the uh, power button instead of having to use that little start button again. <clears throat> and for to plug in our power button, it will be these little pins right here. Um, I've already connected them to the, uh, the adapter, which shows me exactly where everything goes. So you have the HD, LED, the plus and minus in the right spot. Um, you got the reset switch. Um, there's the ground and power, and then uh, the PLED. I'm just gonna stick that to the back of the machine, um, closest to where uh, the pins. Where the pins are. And please refer to your motherboard manual if you do not have that little easy connector uh, to see it, or if your motherboard has really small writing and yep. you can read it. All right, so that is the connector right there. Um, the four little pins beside it are getting closer down. So the four little pins right here are for your speaker, um, but these pins are for your power, the power switch, reset switch, um, anything you might need. Make sure this is all in the right spot. As you can see, there's seven holes, or no, there's nine holes, and one of them is not and there's one pin missing so if you put that in the wrong spot you could bend the pin by putting it in like that so yeah just don't force it you'll be fine yep and it should just go in real easily like that all right so we'll plug in the computer uh aren't you forgetting the power for the graphics card oh look even i can forget things um so this graphics card has a power slot that it needs since it is uh, so big and powerful, you're going to want to grab your PCIe power connector. Um, some of them say it on there. Usually it's just a uh, six pin or six, yeah, six pin. But there is an attachment for eight pin because not all graphics cards are the same and built alike. Yep. And, um, as for uh, some of these more legacy cards, you can see that they don't take up enough power to need one, so sometimes you won't need it depending on what kind of expansion card, like if you put in a network card or a sound card or a right, screen capture card or any other card there is. So when installing this, try not to break your, um, your video card in half. Just a little bit of force is needed to push it in properly. Um, so next we'll plug it in. You could install your RAM right now or you could wait. Actually, there's one thing we did forget. Hard drive. All right. Yeah, so. but that's not needed in order to access the BIOS to verify all parts are working. All right. And we'll do the RAM later. So plug it in, switch it on, and then since I am uh, plugged in the power switch, I'll use it one little click. And it should be working just fine. So Go ahead and uh, touch the video output to the monitor. Yep, everything plugs, uh, everything turns on just fine. Now we have to attach the video output. Um, a lot of computers use VGA, ours uses a DVI cable. Uh, not many computers use VGA anymore. Right now it's HDMI and display port. Older computers use VGA then. Uh, there are many different types of uh, video format cables and all, like whatever you would call them. So just make sure your graphics card will have the right one for your monitor and you will have the right cable. Yep. And make sure you have the right cable for this. Um, this is a DVI-D cable. Um, if you try to use DVI-A, it won't fit in there properly since it is made specifically for a DVI-D. Uh, that graphics card supports DVI-I, but we don't have that cable, so we're just gonna go with the lack of certain functionality and use DVI-D. All right, so the video card is working. Um, we can see that everything is there. All right, we'll need a keyboard to go on any further. Yep. All 
All right, so just connect your keyboard and um, the uh, USB slot in the back of the computer. So it's not fun to do. <coughs> Um, oh. All right, so we're going to go to the uh, BIOS. Um, BIOS that screen should be uh, F1. Yeah, all right. Um, so now that we've got everything put in properly, everything's on. Um, now we can check for the memory. Um, using just the keyboard which should be in your main and you'll see it right here the brand of processor we have the amount of memory um, this is showing it in megabytes but that is 8 gigabytes of RAM alright so next we're going to install the hard drive and the other stick of RAM at the same time and the other stick of RAM at the same time Alright, so you gotta turn it off. Just hold the power button for a second, let go. Turn it off again for the power supply. Unplug the power supply. Discharge by holding the power switch for about just a few seconds. Alright. So next we're going to install our hard drive. This is a uh, SATA hard drive. Um, what kind of hard drive is it? It's not a hard drive. It's just one of the ones we had laying around. <laughs> Luckily it's a little bit newer so it's not going to have any problems. Um, to install these in the case... Uh, just with this case mounting style, other cases have different mounting style as if you'll have to screw it in and all, although this here is an easy slide in. And slide in. Yep, uh, right. the RAM. We might be able to finish. Alright, we're going to install the other stick of RAM right beside the one we first installed. Like we said earlier, please refer to your motherboard manual to see which channel you want to install it in. Yep. Um, Where's our motherboard manual? Ours is right over there. This is our motherboard manual right there. Um, our motherboard actually has Wi-Fi. Just one cool thing about it. Um, all right, so next we have to actually plug the SATA power and SATA cable, the SATA cable and the SATA power to the power supply, or not power supply, the uh, hard drive. And the motherboard. And the come the around here. Data to motherboard. All right. Turn it off. Yeah. Sure. Uh, all right, so right down here with all the cables. This is your SATA power connector and, well, your SATA power where it would connect and the SATA cable connection. Mm -hmm. um, all right, plug that in and uh, install yeah. your power, I mean, install your operating system using uh, some live USB for CD. Uh, if you buy a copy of Windows from the store, it will come with a USB flash drive. You just plug it in, install it, and that should be your computer done. Yeah. Um, 